Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. So join me, let's pray. Father in heaven, I just pray now that indeed you would you would help our brethren up there in Waikoloa Community Church and Pastor Greg and Keone and all the ones that are laboring, the, the youth one that has trouble in his body. We just pray for all of them, Lord, that you would give them strength and let them be a bright light up in that in that portion of our island, Lord. We, we pray for the souls that they'll touch that we can't down here. Lord, and even... To that matter, we pray for all of us down here that you've placed all the different fellowships, Lord. We ask that you would let us be a light to our community, a blessing and, and, and an uplifting to those that are hurting. And we lift up those that are hurting right now. We ask that you would pour out your grace and mercy on them, Lord. Pour it out on us, Lord. I pray for myself. You would help my voice to come in and help my lungs to clear up. And just give us a sweet time in your word this morning. As we come to you, we look to you, our maker, the one that has authored our salvation in your son. Just help us, Lord, to grow in our faith, to be strengthened and equipped for, well, this year that lies ahead of us, Lord. You know what we're going to face. Just begin that equipping today. And we pray, Lord, the souls that are, maybe they, they don't know your love or your, your sweet grace, today would be a, a great day of introduction to that to that wonderful gift that you've given. We ask that now in Jesus' name, your son's precious name we pray. Everyone that agreed said? Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me in your Bible to Luke chapter 2? Remember last week we looked at the announcement of the birth of our Lord and saw the wonderful, the wonderful promise that God made to Mary that he, she was going to have a child and his name would be called Emmanuel. Anyone remember what Emmanuel translates to? God with us. And that was, uh, you know, one of those things that is, it, it, by the way, if you have ever had anyone, or you might have thought this yourself, the question of, you know, if there is really a God, and he's really there, why doesn't he show himself? You know, why doesn't he just reveal himself. I mean, he's God, right? He's maker of everything. He, he, he should be a, a, at least able to reveal himself. And what's the answer to that question? Because that's a good question. By the way, if someone asks that question, don't get mad at them. Like, well, are you stupid? You know, what kind of question are you to question whether God's real? Look, that's a totally legit question. When you, when you wonder, is God really there? Can, you know, I wish he would reveal himself. The answer to that question is, he already has. And, and the, the, the reason some people ask is because they they're not aware. You know, in the scripture it says, how will they hear unless there be a preacher? How will they know this news unless someone tells them, a herald, someone to tell, proclaim the news? That God has made his way here to reveal himself. And he did it. This, this is the best part of the, of the year. I mean, we get to celebrate this annually when we, when we celebrate the birth of our Lord. We remember that God gave the gift, the greatest gift ever given was the gift of his son. Now, in the Bible, we only have two places that talk about the birth of our Lord in the New Testament in the, in the sense of the fulfillment. We have a lot of promises of the Messiah's coming in the Old Testament. And Matthew is very clear when in, in the Gospel of Matthew. He's like, this happened in order that the prophecy would be fulfilled, what Micah spoke. You, O Bethlehem, though you're least amongst the clans, you're going to be the one that has the, the big blessing, the blessing of the Messiah. And so the name of the place where he will be born is told. The, 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 some of the circumstances around his birth are told. And Matthew tells us, a lot of those things, because Matthew's audience is, is a Jewish audience. So he's writing to the Jews and saying, hey, our, our promises, our prophecies are fulfilled in this one right here. The one that was always being spoken of, this is the right guy. And so Matthew's gospel is great. But 
Luke's gospel was written to a man named Theophilus. Theophilus' translation, I told you the translation of his name, Theo. In Greek, it means God. And Phyllis is what? Lover. Lover of God. And it's a Gentile name. And it's believed Luke was also a Gentile. And uh, do we have anyone Jewish here? We have all Gentiles. Okay, so you guys are going to like the Luke gospel then. Uh, th this is written... To the lovers of God, I would say the Gentile style, you know. He's not worried about telling the fulfillment of the prophecy in the sense of, you know, like the, the Jews were waiting and waiting for thousands of years for these prophecies to come true. Us Gentiles, we just get to ride in on the coattails of their promises, you know. They've been waiting and we're like, didn't really know about it. I'm sure glad to hear about it, though. So turn with me to Luke chapter 2. I want to show you this morning... In the Gospel of Luke, we read the account of the birth of our Lord. Now, many of you have heard this story. This is the, this is the part that's probably the most quoted, most um, repeated portion at Christmas time. And I can't even imagine how many thousands and thousands of pulpits this has been read from. But, but maybe someone hasn't heard this or someone who will be listening will get to hear it for the first time. I just pray they have ears. They get to hear this part. This is really sweet. It says, verse 1 of Luke chapter 2. Now in those days, it says, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. And it was, <coughs> it was like this. It went, that a census would be taken of all of the inhabited earth. And this was the first census which was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Now it says, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the, to, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, because it, it, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David. So Joseph, you remember, we went over his genealogy last week. He's descended from David. So he has to go to his hometown, Bethlehem. Now, if, if you don't know Hebrew, Beth in Hebrew means house. Le is of, and Hem, what's Hem? You guys know? Bread. House of bread. Now, this will be significant in a minute, but for right now, Joseph is going to his hometown called House of Bread. If you know Hebrew, it just it, it, I, I like to know what the names mean. It's easier for my brain to keep track. So he's going to the place, the House of Bread, and it says, because that's the city of David, and it says, in order to register, along with Mary, who he was engaged to, and she was with child. Now, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. You guys heard this part, right? They get, they, they, they're out in the, where, where you keep the animals. Laid in a manger. A manger's a, a feeding trough for animals. Now, I don't know if you're going to get my wife to put our firstborn in, the, in a feeding trough. She would have, we, we did put her in a suitcase when we were over, come and leave in Kapiolani over there in Honolulu. For the first night, we didn't have anything. We opened the suitcase and lined it and made a little bassinet out of it. You know, it's just, you do what you got to do, though, sometimes as parents, don't you? Well, Mary and Joseph, this is what happened to them. There was no room in the inn, so they literally relegated to the stables. And they, and they, they lay their baby wrapped in swaddling cloth in, right into a, an animal's feeding trough. And there, the, in the manger, it says, and, and in the same region, it says, there were some shepherds. Now, you guys, this is one of my favorite parts of the story. They were staying out in the fields, and they were keeping watch over their flock at night. That's their job, you know, look out for their sheep, make no, sure no wolves come in and snatch them. And an angel of the Lord appeared suddenly, and he stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly what? Frightened. Yeah, afraid. I mean, they are freaked out. This is what, in case someone says to you, oh, I had an angel show up. It's so peaceful. You know, all the angels that show up in the Bible, I notice that the first thing that they usually have to say is what? Fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid, you know. In fact, look at verse 10. But the angel of the Lord said to them, and what's it say? Do not be afraid. The first thing, what an intro, huh? You're an angel sent by God to reveal something to man. And every time you show up, the men start free. <laughs> and the angels start with, okay, wait, I got a message for you. But first of all, 
just relax. It's okay. Don't be afraid. What, what is it about angels that would make you afraid? They're mighty. They're, they're, I mean, just the presence of an angel that, that comes from God, it must just be, I mean, awe-inspiring. That an angel has to start with, do not be afraid. They're not like the precious moments, little pastel <laughs> figurines. You know, when, when my mother-in-law collected those, and <laughs> I always used to laugh. I'd look up at the shelf with those, and I can't, I'd, I'd start chuckling, thinking, can you imagine that little thing going, do not be afraid? <laughs> I'm not. I mean, if that's what an angel looked like, we wouldn't be afraid. We'd be like, oh, so cute. <laughs> right? But that's not what they really look like. So they have to lead off with, do not be afraid. And then he says, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth, swaddling cloth, and lying in a manger. Now, you're telling shepherds that they're going to find a baby in an f- animal feeding trough, a, in a stable. Now, first of all, a stable is not anything that's going to freak a shepherd out. They're not going to be like, oh, I'm afraid to go in a stable because where do they usually have to go when they go to town? To the stable. They're going to put their animals in there. They're like, we already know the whole gig. But they don't probably have too often, you know, babies found laying in their feeding troughs for their animals. They're going, what? And the angel says, this is a sign for you that you'll find him laying there. So it says, suddenly then there appeared with that angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Here the curtain peels back. Can you just see this? One angel shows up and they're freaked out. Now this that it says appearing with him all of a sudden you got a whole angelic choir and they begin to sing now anybody here if we had a time machine would like to volunteer to go back to see this besides me I, uh, who would who would mind seeing a whole i mean angelic choir appear and you're out there in the starlit you know sky with on a hill in Bethlehem and you got this angel announcing this good news and then behind him you just see, I can just see all the angels start showing up. And, and they begin to sing. Now, I only say this because being a worship leader, I, I'm kind of into this. I'd like to hear the angels' rendition of this. As they begin to sing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. They begin to sing this. I wonder what it sounded like. Does anyone, does any of you ever think about that? Like, I wonder what that sounds like. You know, a whole choir of angels singing this. And they, they, they're probably looking out going, ha, huh, what's the audience? They're going, um, well, a lot of little white fuzzballs down there. Wait, there's a couple people. It doesn't look like a big crowd. I mean, can you imagine you practice and practice and you get ready for this angelic moment and then... You go to sing, and you got a couple of shepherds. They're keeping watch over their sheep. And you, s- you give this great announcement. You get to sing the announcement of the birth. Now, the shepherds, it says, when the angels had gone away into heaven, then the shepherds, they began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Let's go check this out. And so they came in a hurry, and they found their way to Mary and to Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. Man, this morning, Aaron zipped up. He had his little boy, John Robert, in, his co- in the car out there. And we were all peeking in the window, you know. Not supposed to go in public yet, but I'm like, I'm sick, so i got to stay. But I can look through the window. He's so cute. You know, just seeing the little baby boy, it's like, oh. And I can just see these guys, they run, they, they get there, and when they see this, they tell Mary. It says they made known the statement about which was told them about the child. They, they said, an angel came, and he told us this about your son, that today, in the city of David, there is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now, can you imagine you're Mary, and you get visited in a stable. First of all, you don't want to be there. 
You're probably going, I wish we were in the end. And then you wrap your, your baby in swaddling cloth and you put him in the manger and you're thinking, this is, a, this is such a downer from what I had anticipated. I was thinking a hospital birth or maybe home birth, you know, but not this. A stable. And, and then you get shepherds showing up. And they're going, angels just appeared. And, and the one, the big guy, he spoke first. He said, don't be afraid. But then he said, today, today is born the Savior, Christ the Lord. The one that everybody's been waiting for is born. And he said this is a sign we would find him wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And here he is. And now when they told Mary, listen to verse 19, I love this. And Mary treasured up all these things and pondering them, it says, in her heart. You're the, you're the mom. You just gave birth, and all of a sudden some guys go, show up and go, now, you already, do you remember, she had an angelic visit we went over last week, right? She had, or two weeks ago, Aaron did, how, how the angel appeared to her and said that she would be with child. And she said, how can this be? I'm a virgin. The angel said, don't worry. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you, and he will make you to be with child. And that child will be the Son of God. The very thing that answers the question when people say, I wish God would be with us. God said, I made it so he will be. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.